Hi guys, welcome to my crazy life. It's Lori and today I have we're gonna, a DIY for you. We're gonna do some needle felting. So we're gonna do a review on this dimensions kit that I bought at Michael's. I wanted to have a felting kit that's readily available for you. So when you go to Michael's, this whole kit, I already opened it to make sure, has everything you need to create this super sweet little penguin. Uh, regular price, I think it was $10, but I had a 40% off coupon. Um, so all the materials are in it. And then I would say maybe a pair of scissors. I'm not 100% sure yet. Now some other things you could do instead of buying a kit, which I think if you're a beginner, this is the way to go. But I like go to yarn festivals because I knit and I actually purchased this kit from a company called Going Gnome. Oh, the glare. It's called Going Gnome and I made these two little birds and I had some extra felt left or wool. This is um, real wool. You have to use the real thing. You can't use like fiber fill or something. It needs to be wool. Um... And then you could do what I do. I got this yarn from this company called Felted Sky. And these are called Bats. And this, again, is just wool that has been dyed. So I picked up just some colors to do a project that I wanted to do. And then I ordered that color on Etsy. So, I mean, there's lots of places to get it. My recommendation to you would be, um, first is probably just get a kit. Because the kit has all the things, and you can see if this is even something you're interested in. But I had some requests to show my needle felting, so that's what we're going to do. Um, I have some other things I've created. I was practicing on this one, so I made a Santa. I'm not loving the color of his nose. It looks very Muppet to me, but it's okay. And then what his beard is made out of is also sheep's um, fur, hair, wool, but it's called locks and all they do is they shear the sheep and they wash the locks and then I and then you buy it. It's not been processed into any type of fiber. Uh, and I just like it because it's super curly. So yeah, I made that just practicing. Oh, hanging on my tree. Right now what I'm working on, and I'll give you a better up close, is a gnome garland. So I'm creating these little gnomes. Um, and I'll show you when I flip the camera around, but it's so far, that's all I've gotten. I haven't attached any of their beards yet. And I believe, yeah, I have one more, uh, gnome to make. And there's a hundred different ways to create the shapes, which is what I wanted to show you. So let me flip you around, show you the materials we have, and then we'll go through the process. Um, I'll open this kit for you, show you what comes in it, and then probably, we're going to do a lot of fast forwarding. I'm cutting plastic here. A lot of fast forwarding just because the needle process itself can take some time, but it has to be done. So give me a moment. Okay, here's a better look at the kit. Let me take us out of the plastic because you're getting a glare. So it comes in a bag like that. Um, this is the card that's on the front and it has some steps. Uh, one, it just says tear the wool, start needle felting, and shape by hand. That's not real helpful, but <laughs> that's what comes on the front in the package. And this was a smaller of the kit and then a piece of cardboard. Um, this is the foam block that you're going to push your needle into. I have a needle out here. So this is a, this is really hard. Um, the one that I have and I've purchased, is a, it's not as firm. I feel like if you're not careful going into this little rubber block, you're going to break needles. So you just want to be careful, but this does come with it. And this will help when you're needling. You don't want to put your hand behind it. These needles, and I'm not even sure if I can get a view for you, are pretty flimsy. I mean, they're it's very pokey and there's some barbs on it and it's pretty, you know, bendable. But what the barbs do in the poking is it locks the wool pieces together. Uh, this kit does come with a needle, which is a nice little handle up here as well. And it's protected in some cardboard. Um, you're getting your directions. It looks like... Oh, yeah, it comes in English, probably Spanish and French, I would say. But it has your directions. And on the back, it has 
a little map that you can kind of lay your pieces over to make sure you're creating the right size. And then it comes with your wool. And we're going to open this up. Um, and you, you should have plenty of wool in these kits. So the red looks like it's for the scarf. Now, this is definitely a different quality wool than what I purchase. Um, I do get mine from... Uh, see, that's not even going to come apart. Folks who have the sheep. So there's the... Um, here's some white, red. So my sheep, my wool looks a little different than this, but it's wool. It's fine. I'm not sure what kind of wool this is, but we'll figure it out. And then here's some orange for the nose and the beak. So that's finishing stuff over here. Now let me show you what mine looks like. It's just a different, mm, it smells like sheep too. The cats go nuts for it. This stuff does not smell like sheep so I'm not sure what type of wool this is but they say it'll work this is merino mixed with some other sheeps but this is mostly merino all right anyway so I won't need my scissors but I do have some coffee peppermint mocha oh and look at my cup oh, you're not gonna be able to see it here let's do this it says Mary Catmus. I got it for Christmas last year from a co-worker. It's a uh, Ray Dunn, I believe. Okay. So, we're going to use this kit as intended. So, we're going to work on this. Now, I do have extra needles. Because that's how I roll. Um, well, because I also make things. I'm in the middle of making the garland and Christmas ornaments. So, you take it out. Oh, that is nice, though. It has a nice squishy rubber. Your hand's not going to slip. Um, if you see mine, it's just a metal, like a metal L to hold on to. And this one that came with this kit is nice. It's like rubbery. It's not plastic. It's definitely rubber. And then you have your needle. And this needle here is the same as my needle. It is a triangle. They do come in different shapes. This is a triangle with barbs. So we're going to do this. Okay, we're ready. The directions, and like I said, I will speed up. Tell me to pull the black wool apart and roll it into your cylinder that is about three inches high by two inches wide. Okay, so it wants me to take this whole thing, and what you can do is like, you know, widen it across. If I need this to be, well, it came three inches wide, so... Uh, we're going to just roll it with our hands. This is a very forgiving craft. Um, think burrito. If I would have to say something, think burrito. So we've rolled it up to our loose cylinder shape. And then on the back, it gives us a shape like almost like a pull, uh, bowling pin that we're going to start felting into this shape the first thing you want to do I think what's freaking me out is they've cut this wool and it has like these straight edges which I'm not used to but it's fine okay so a couple important things you work over your block and you go straight in what you don't want to do is like go in all wiggy woggy because you can break these needles. I broke two the other day on Thanksgiving making an a ornament and I'll show you at the end. So right now all I'm doing is kind of just locking it in place. I will tell you this is extremely sharp. I just poked myself like it's super sharp and I should have maybe not purchased a black um, because I think it's going to be hard to see but you want to just keep your two hands separate and all we're doing right now is just kind of loosely going in and you're locking together your felt your um wool to create felt because by poking it in it the barbs grab your fibers and lock them together and that's what creates felt now in this natural scheme of things just wrapping this up i've kind of got the shape i need already um, here's like a little neck. We'll use this as the head and the body. So this is where I'm going to fast forward. All I'm going to do and evenly do 
is poke it. You can do it all the way through on this process. Um, yeah, and you're just trying to, it will shrink down. That's the goal at this point is to shrink it down. Now what I am doing here is going around and trying to get myself a neck going first. So we'll play some music in the background. And you can watch me felt. All right, I forgot to show you. I pulled off two little pieces before I wrapped it up. You're going to make two wings and a tail, and then you're going to do the eyes. So you'll need, you know, a little bit of this. That should be plenty for the eyes, if not too much. And that will do my tails. Um, right now, right here, we're at the cylinder. It's not quite firm enough. Um, you want to think about, like, cooked chicken. If it's too loose... What happens is you end up, it'll, it could fall apart and you get weird little strings, you know, little fibers hanging out. So I'm just been working it. This is the bottom. So what I do is I hold the bottom up. I really want, if you want it to stand, you want a decent flat bottom. And if you go all the way in, this is also locking in some of your middle fiber. Now I'm making this an ornament. So I'm going to do a rounded bottom. Um, and I'm just poking into the thing and you just into the corner here. The, the big deal is you don't want to stay in one spot too long. So you definitely want to just keep moving. If you, if you felt one spot before the rest, you're going to get uneven. So you just do, you know, a couple pokes and turn it a couple pokes and turn it. And this is the bottom. And if you can see, I'm not sure it's dark. I mean, it's black, so it's hard to see. But if you can see the shape, I'm working the neck here. And hopefully that can be my next spot. And I, notice I'm keeping these fingers away from this needle. And I'll show you a little gizmo that I created. They do sell like felting tools that Joanne Clover Brand makes them. That you can put multiple needles in. But if you look here, I just rubber banded three together. And now I have a tool. And what this will do is make this stage go much faster. Um, you know, working with three needles opposed to one at the same time. And then your head, you just really want it to be a nice shape. here so that's the tail that we're going to go with these are the eyes or the feet those are the feet and i don't know where the oh the beak is here and these are those side wings but we're working this body shape right now and if you see what i'm doing here um i'm taking my needle and i'm going in at an angle i'm pushing the fibers that way to lock you know, you just don't want to like push it in and then try to manipulate the fiber with your needle. You want to use a pushing motion because what you'll end up doing is snapping the tip of that needle. And like I said, I lost two on Thanksgiving making an ornament and I'll show you the ornament that I made. So we're going to fast forward again. I mean, this, this is the time consuming part. You can also come, you know, this direction. You just want to watch your fingers. Like that will go right through. It's very sharp needle. It'll go right through. So I'm gonna pause recording and I'm gonna continue 
to just kind of create this bottom. And if you want, you can kind of rub it between your hands a little bit to just get the, the see the shape that you're working because you really want a neck because that's where you're going to put your scarf around his little neck. See how that looks now? So we're not there yet. It's still a little squishy. I really want to tighten it up just a little more and then we're going to go and put his white belly on him. Okay, I think we're there. For my rendition anyway, yours will look a little different. The one thing about this kit I don't like is how fly away the fibers are. You get a lot of um, like little fibers. You could probably wet your hands and agitate it, but I think we're going to be okay. Now, just we're going to um, go in here for a second on this neck. And just one more couple times, give it some definition. And that's just going around and around. Remember, not in the same spot. And then up here in the head area, just kind of I'm watching your fingers shape it up a little bit. Okay, step three. Stay up. Pull apart the white wool to make a thin, even layer. Needle it to the front of the penguin's body. Okay, and if you can see in this picture, right there, I want you to do the white V and then just down the front of the body. So, here is the white that I'm opening it up. I don't know if I need any more white. Nope, just for the face and the body. So I think what we'll do is pull a little piece and we're going to start with the face. So I just took a little piece like that big. Once you decide where the front is, so let's say this is going to be his face and his peak will be like right here. So what you want to do kind of get this in the halfway mark and then I just go in and I'm going to tack down where I want that middle to be so this is his peak and by just pushing this in a little bit it locks it in place so look it's in there now I mean I could pull it out but we're not going to and then you're going in not deep because your fingers are behind there but you're just gonna go in and lock it in place because you really want a defined widow's peak I guess is what we're calling it and then we're gonna come over here and kind of do the same thing So we have his little face. Now, if you saw me up here in the black, when you're working something like this, you're kind of misshaping him. Um, so I went up and just kind of worked with the head a little bit. But I think this turned out well. Um, you know, I could futz and fizzle with this for a very long time. But I'm not going to. Okay, much. Body the white and again you can fuss for days on these things oops number four uh for a foot roll orange wool between your fingers into a ball that's about three quarters of an inch in size needle until firm again using the pattern on the back repeat to make the second foot using a smaller ball needle as a beak all right so here's our sizing so we're going to move you and we're going to separate this piece oops we're going to separate this piece of orange into three pieces. Um, and the best I can tell you is a beak needs to be small. And then our foots here need to be maybe half of that. And then you're just wadding it up. This is 
the best I can describe it. It's hard to show with my fingers, but I'll show you in a second. You're wadding it up into an oval to make a foot. So you kind of got this weird little oval. And then again, you're watching your fingers. Go slow here. And you're just gonna manipulate this wool into the shape of a foot. Because I wanna utilize it to um, attach it to the face and it goes right in here between his eyes. So you just start poking it down. You really want to get it attached pretty good. And then I'll show you how we're going to see. Ooh, come on. Let's see if I can. There we go. Now what we're going to do is go back this direction a little bit to kind of get it to stand up straight because it's a beak right and then if you bend it down the other way and just I mean not like all the way down but across this seam up top here but guys let's see his little nose oh I hope this is not blurry okay I think it's good There we go. His little nose. And it's not, you know, it's attached. And you can kind of go around it. You just don't want to overdo it and end up making his nose disappear. His little feet are on. Isn't that adorable? And they're on there pretty darn good, guys. This one can use a little more attaching, but it's fine. Okay. He also does stand up. Like that. Now, I think it's time. Oh, they want us to do the eyes next. So with the eyes, you just take, I mean, like, I'm probably going to cut this again. What you should be able to do, it's called drafting. Oh yeah, we can do it. It just pulls apart. You see like that? You just want a little tiny bit, right? Determine where you want your eye. I just kind of attach them right here. Let's say you want your eye right here. Lock it in. It's way too much fiber. And then if you take your needle and just kind of poke it down in there. Way too much fiber, guys. And then you're just going to keep poking kind of moving it around these black pieces until you get them down in there. Little eyes. And then the last step, so we need to make a tail and two wings, same way we did the feet. You're just making two teardrops and a little like guitar pick. So we're gonna do that. I'm gonna take this into three pieces. Just separate it. Right now I think we'll just take this and pull it in half to make two wings. Let's see how that does for us. And again, you're just going to kind of, this is going to be flat. That is one thing you're going to look at. So, I'm just going to 
kind of flatten it out. And get this attached. And I'm probably going to cut it because this fiber does not shape well. So we're going to do this. And I'm just kind of determining how long you want his wing. Right? Like, I feel like that's long enough. Well, my little measurement says I want him a little longer. So we're going to go down to here. Because once I get them um, all felted together, it'll probably be smaller. All right, I'm going to work on these this shape. And it's just like pinching it how low you want it. That should be your point. And then you're just going to felt it all together. And once you do that, you'll have an arm and I'll show you when I get close, but it just takes a while. And I'm also moving it to my better foam block. You're not gonna be able to see it as well on here, but if you can see how far in the needle goes and how quickly you're getting a piece. All right, we'll be back. We have a tail. And we have two wings. So what we do is come back here. According to the directions, his little tail. You just really want it to be even on the back. So we're going to do that first. And then the last step is going to be um, making the scarf. And it's the same concept. I'm going to use a different color. I want to show you the difference in quality uh, when I use my fiber opposed to the fiber that came with this and how quickly I can make a scarf. I've been packing away at this thing for hours here, it feels like. Probably not, but it feels like it. All right, there's his little tail. And then we have his two little wings that are gonna get attached um, at the neck. Now remember, we're gonna have a scarf that's gonna go over that. This is kind of barbaric if you think about it, guys. But look, we have his little arm on there. And then you just wanna make sure when you do the other side that you're doing it, I think I wanna kind of, Pull this forward. You really want to cover the white a little bit. There we go. And then we'll do the same thing. You just want to make sure they're going kind of in the same spot on either side. You know, wings are even. Arms are kind of even. There we go. And this is cute, but it's very... There's lots of little fibers. So I'm assuming, I don't know what kind of wool they're using, but it definitely is a long staple length. It's not really um, going in there. He's got a really big head. I think I need to work on rounding his head a little more. He looks very Elvis. <laughs> That's okay. A lot of it came from poking the front so much when I put the face on. And his little nose popped up again. There we go. So. There's his little body. His arms are on. I'll work at attaching him a little firmer. I mean, he's totally cute. Right? I mean, this is adorable. He's going to be hung. Okay, so it calls for this red here, but we're gonna make it out of my rusty red. And this is the fiber that you can get when you purchase like fiber from a felting company and they're indie dyers, you know, they're indie people. So I'm gonna fluff it up, but look at the difference. Besides the color, these don't really 
act like these. So I think, yeah, that'll be long enough. So we want about this length. We're gonna use this. I'll even use a, the single needle that came with the kit. And what we're looking for is a rectangular shaped scarf. Okay, it's longer than I need. So we'll start here at the back and go this way. And I like it right like this because I'm also going to trim it off at the bottom. But you just want to attach it just like we've been doing with all the other stuff. And in the back, I'm not too concerned. You just want it to attach. And up here, if you saw that I um, pulled it apart and then reattached it, super easy. That is it. And then what I would do is come up here with the scissors and kind of just cut it off at the end. And here's the picture. And here's our finished product. So I think we did pretty good, guys. Not bad. Um, I'll give you my thoughts here in a moment. I'm gonna finish him up and just give me one second. Okay, what are my thoughts on this kit? I think there are definitely some pros and cons. Obviously the con is to me the fiber content that they're using. I don't honestly know what that fiber is. I'm gonna fuss with this while we're talking. I don't know what kind of wool it is. It says it's 100% wool, so I'm going to give it that. Um, it just doesn't act like the, any of the wools that I've ever worked with. But we got a super cute little penguin. And what I'll do is hang him on my tree. So I think convenience, it's great. Um, you get enough of the material. This is what's left. I won't keep it, but this is what's left. So you get plenty of materials. The directions were pretty clear. Now I'm somebody that knows what I'm doing. How clear are they? If you don't know what you're doing, you know, is a whole nother story. Um, what my recommend, he has got a big old noggin here. My recommendation, honestly, would be to maybe look on Etsy for a kit. Um, their directions are a little more clear. And a lot of times the sellers will also have videos um, that you can watch. Now, if you want to buy one of these kits, they're very inexpensive and they're readily available. I would say buy one, but still watch some YouTube videos on how to do the felting process. I mean, I'm going to speed through this. You're not going to get a great um, lot of knowledge from me. I don't want to make this an hour long video, but um, I would definitely say watch some videos. Again, I like this company Going Gnome. This kit came with everything and some really nice directions and they also have videos out there. The Felted Sky. Now, I made this watching a Felted Sky video. I bought the fiber, but I didn't buy the kit. But do you see like on this black, how furry that looks? And that doesn't matter how long I work it, I can't get the fuzzy to go away. But now look at this one. Same tools. It just melts in when you felt. So just, you know, all that white up there. I'm going to keep talking at it, but I don't feel like I'm getting him anywhere. This guy here, I used the dryer ball and then some felt that I had. And it's all felted. And then these gnomes, the same thing. And you see you don't have all of those little fur sticking out. 
these are going to hang from their little hats. And I can show you these when they're done. They're not done yet. I've got one more to felt. I need to put some noses on them. And then we're going to add, this is a lock. This is how the locks come off of a sheep. They just, it's the sheep. They sheared the sheep. They washed it, cleaned these furs, you know, from the vegetation and stuff and sent it to me. This has not been processed. Now, once, if they were to process it, they take, um, it looks like, I don't have it out here, but it looks like a dog brush with the bristles and they, they have machines that do it, but they brush and brush and brush and brush it and then they clean it and that's what you get. Now, if it's gray, this has probably been treated like with some kind of a chemical to make it this yellow color because she, I mean, I guess some sheeps are this color, but it goes from this to this, that stuff. I don't know. Again, I don't know what the fiber content is and what kind of sheep they used. Um, this is mostly Merino. I think it says it on here. It does not. It does not tell me what to choose. But anyway, that's my opinion on the Dimensions Felting Kit from Michaels. All right, guys, have a good one. I'll talk to you later.